my name is Nicole welcome to my channel thank you so much for being here today today I have a very chill sit down video where I kind of just go through my currently reading which um, is a little too long <laughs> I have too many books that I'm currently reading it's a little um, overwhelming and then I also want to kind of cover some spring recommendations or just some books that I would like to get to before we hit the summertime where I tend to gravitate towards um, completely different books as compared to those that I read during the spring. I know it's like the middle of May and spring is almost over but it's okay. I live in Miami and like the seasons basically are the same year long so that doesn't really matter. <laughs> So today I'm drinking from this beautiful, is this a monogram? Is this what they're called? The little single letters? I'm drinking from my monogram mug that my best friend Allie got me for Christmas. And I'm accompanied today by a little manatee that I use to hold loose leaf tea. So it's like a little tea infuser in here. And I'm drinking a blackberry sage black tea. It is probably one of the most delicious teas that I've ever tried before i've ever purchased i don't have to like add honey to kind of make it taste a little better this one just tastes so so nice it's one of my favorite teas i think so far that i've purchased so i'm gonna start talking about my currently reading <laughs> which is insane i don't know how i got here but it happens to me like every few months i just end up having too many books that i'm currently reading um and I don't know. I don't know how this happens, but it does. So the first one that I want to talk about is one that I've been reading for a little bit and it's Lost in the Neverwoods. I have my copy back here, but I don't feel like picking it up right now. <laughs> Maybe I should. Let me get those books so that I can show you them. Hold on. Okay, so I grabbed those books that were <laughs> there on my windowsill. Um, okay. My bookmark fell. <laughs> First, let me start by talking about my new bookmark that I love. I've always wanted to buy one of these little bookmarks that I see at Barnes & Noble that have like a timer and that have a little built-in reading light. And I got this one. I got this one which is R2D2 and C3PO and BB-8. And then on top it has a little timer and built-in book light that I like. And yeah, I don't know. One of those purchases that you just make on a whim but then it just satisfies you so so much because it's so cute um but anyway the first book i'm going to talk about is lost in the never neverwoods by aiden thomas i saw this at my library and i just immediately picked it up and i started reading it that same day but for some reason it's taking me a while i'm only on page 200 and it's probably been like two weeks i've been i guess kind of in a reading slump these past two months and i I don't think it was because of a book or anything. I think I've just been a little overwhelmed because I'm moving tomorrow and like I had some school work to do. But yeah, I kind of have been in a reading slump. But I've been reading this and I enjoy it. It's um, basically a Peter Pan retelling, but there's like a little bit of horror mystery um, to it because I don't know if this is gonna be a spoiler. So I'm going to not say what I was about to say, but it essentially there's some something out there that's kind of stealing children there's a bunch of children going missing and there's like this really scary um, these scary woods that are in the neighborhood that a lot of people kind of tend to avoid just because weird things tend to happen and um, I am enjoying it so far I think it's gonna end up being a three or four star for me though I loved Cemetery Boys last year it was an instant five star I actually have a reading vlog that kind of flunked <laughs> not a lot of people watched it but that's okay I did like a Halloween reading vlog and um, yeah I caught the ending of, of Cemetery Boys on camera and I was just like crying um, so Cemetery Boys was pretty amazing for me but Lost in the Never why do I always want to say neighbor? Lost in the Neverwoods doesn't really equate to Cemetery Boys. But I am enjoying it a lot. I think it's a really strong Peter Pan retelling and the characters are really um, interesting. Peter Pan himself, like in the book, is 
100% the reason that I am continuing to read it because he's he's just written so so well. The next book I'm going to talk about is actually a manga. I have been so inspired by my friend Rachel from Let Me in the Library because she reads so much manga um, and I I don't know it kind of like it kind of reminded me how much I used to love watching anime and reading manga when I was in high school and like when I first started college and I kind of decided to just go to the library and pick myself up a bunch of manga and read them just for a good time and that's what I did but the one that I'm currently reading is My Love Story by Kazune Kawahara. It is kind of funny. <laughs> I haven't really, I don't know why it's taking me again so long to read this because it's so short. I usually read manga in like one sitting. For some reason I keep putting this one down after like a few pages because I keep picking it up right before bed and then I get so so sleepy that I don't finish it. But this one I guess is about like this guy who doesn't really get girls but then his friend like all of the girls are in love with him but he doesn't really care about them and it just seems to be like a funny story about that and they're kind of young i think they just graduated middle school so they're gonna enter high school or like the equivalent of middle and high school in the u.s but it's funny manga is just or manga i don't know i interchange between manga and manga i don't know if either of them are correct but i think that reading um something light-hearted like that is just necessary when you're feeling down so if you don't really know what to read i highly recommend you to pick up some like sweet light-hearted um doesn't have to be manga but maybe just like a nice graphic novel or something like that okay the next book i'm going to talk about hmm, isn't here let me get it from my library bag hold on Okay, so the next three books that I'm going to be talking about are actually four book clubs that I am participating in this month. The first one being The Witch Boy by Molly Knox Ostertag. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. But this is for my friend Noelle at Noelle Attempts to Read for their uh, new graphic novel book club, which I think is called The Garden Graphic Novel Gnomes or something like that. I always out I always say it incorrectly um, but I will link all of their information in the description um, if you're interested in joining but this is the first pick for the book club and it's the May pick and it's the witch boy I don't know what this is about I was supposed to read it this weekend and I just didn't because again I'm just I've just been really busy with like moving and packing stuff and buying things and just Thinking about moving takes up a lot of my time too, but um, I have to read this before the live show discussion. Um, but it's really beautiful, like the art is just right up my alley. The colors are just so, so nice. Um, kind of reminds me of like the Tea Dragon Society in terms of aesthetic, but um, not sure what this is really about. It has to do with magic. But I'm really excited to read it. <laughs> the next book I have here that I'm- these are all by the way books that I'm currently reading. Just- just a reminder because <laughs> maybe you're confused but these are all books I'm currently reading. The next one I'm reading is A Room with a View by E.M. Forrester. This is for my new book club that I started this month called the Sleepy Academics Book Club where I basically just want to read a bunch of um, classics that might not be too popular, maybe also classics by a diverse range of authors that um, I can read with other people so that, you know, maybe you don't read classics often and maybe you're not a literature student so it's a little harder for you to really understand classic literature. This is basically the, the goal of the club. So I decided to read A Room with a View and I am kind of enjoying it so far. I'm pretty surprised by how accessible this book is in terms of its language and in terms of the plot. It's just very simple. It's about this girl, Lucy, who lives in like middle class Victorian England. Um, and she decides to go to Florence with her cousin, accompanied by her cousin, who's basically her chaperone. And that's really it. Like you just follow this character through Italy and I don't know. <laughs> so far it's really funny. I am actually reading 
some of the chapters live on my channel. Um, tonight I'm going to be reading chapters 3 and 4, but for you that would have been last night. So if you're interested, go check that out. Um, yeah, and that's A Room with a View. The next book I have here is for another book club that um, I am co hosting, I guess, because it's not entirely my book club. It's my friend Beatriz from It Is Beatriz. The book that we're reading for May is The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. I bought myself this beautiful Penguin Classics edition. I have always, always wanted to own one of these because like, look at this book. Look at it. It's, it's so beautiful. The back has like splayed edges. Deckled, ed deckled edges? Is that what, what this is called? Um, it's just, it's really nice. I like it. I'm a fan of this cover, of these editions. Um, I've only read like a few pages of this. I have to really get ahead. But so far, I'm really liking it. Um, I feel like this is just gonna be an incredibly moving and inspiring and beautiful story. It's essentially um, about four Chinese women who have just immigrated to San Francisco and they gather together to play this game called Mahjong um, and they kind of just gossip and like talk to each other and stuff like that and I feel like yeah that's just right up my alley. I've been really loving books where people just talk about their lives or like we just follow characters and we just see their lives and like all of the different people in their lives. Literary fiction has just really been hit in the spot, if you know what I mean. I don't know if this is even considered literary fiction, but it's like, it gives me Celeste Ng vibes and Britt Bennett vibes and like I know it's a classic, but th that's kind of the idea that <laughs> I'm going for with this book, um, at least in my mind. That I even did I even talk about the club I'm reading this for? The club that we're reading, that I'm reading this book for is called the Rory Gilmore Book Club and it was started by my friend Beatriz who asked me to be her co-host. I will again leave all of that information linked in the description if you are interested in joining the Rory Gilmore Book Club. The goal of that book club is essentially to just try to get through as many books from the mass Rory Gilmore books list that exists out there. Um, and that was our first pick. We had a poll up and most of the members chose that one So that's the one that we went with for May <laughs> Okay, so I think this is the last book I have on my physical TBR right now Yes, <laughs> and that's Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I have been reading this book for like over a month probably and Okay, I'm on page 122 like almost halfway through it for some reason i'm taking super long with this book because this book is actually for like a secret video that i want to film and for some reason in my head i'm just like so nervous to film that video because i want it to be perfect and i have all of these like high expectations and this happens to me a lot where like i have this amazing idea for a video but then i hesitate to act on it because i'm afraid of failure so this is an example of what's happening to me right now but this is conversations with friends by sally rooney i love sally rooney i read normal people last year i think and i didn't think anything of it i was just like this is okay i don't really get the hype but then recently or like a few months ago i spoke with some of my bookstagram friends specifically Megna from uh well her her instagram changed and now it's with love meg i believe i'll have her links also in the description but she just opened my eyes her and my friend adeline um they just opened my eyes to sally rooney's writing and like her characters and the way that she writes them and they're it's all so meaningful you know it all has a meaning and her writing is amazing. I started reading this, like I said, a few months ago or half, almost a month ago. And I just, I get it. It's amazing. I love her so much. I cannot wait for her new book release, I think in November or September. Yeah, I love Sally Rooney. And I'm gonna reread Normal People and it'll probably be a five stars. But this one is Conversations with Friends and it's gonna be a five star for me. It's great. It's basically about these two women who used to date but now they're just like really close best friends. Um, and they meet uh, 
this like photographer i believe she is they meet a photographer and she is married to this actor and you just follow them like living their lives again the books that i love are just boring books about people living their lives and we're just following along watching them do it but this one is about these two women who just in their interactions with these with this couple with this married couple there's a relationship that happens basically i guess cheating is a thing but it's i hate cheating obviously i hate reading about it too and it makes me really uncomfortable but for some reason, Sally Rooney writes it in a way that just feels kind of realistic, in a way that like just makes sense and doesn't upset you. But that's not all this book is about. <laughs> it explores a lot more about um, just communications, communication with people, and mm, I guess just that... What's it called? What's that word that I'm looking for? I guess monotony of life? I don't know how to I don't know how to explain Sally Rooney's writing except for what Ben Barnes described it as which I will put up here. Now I'm going to get into um, a few books that I'm reading on as an ebook or as audiobook. The first one being Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple. This is a reread for me. I loved Where'd You Go Bernadette when I first read it like <laughs> seven years ago? A really long time ago. I'm buddy reading this with my friend Rachel, again from Let Me in the Library, um, and it is just... I'm listening to the audiobook. Did I say that already? I'm listening to the audiobook for the first time. Seven years ago when I read it, I read it physically. The audiobook is amazing. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be amazing, not gonna lie. I knew the audiobook for Where'd You Go Over to Debt was just gonna be so funny, so much more funny than the book, and like so much more engaging. Um, it's amazing. I think if you've never read this book, I do highly suggest um, the audiobook. But keep in mind that this book is kind of written like a mixed media format where we see emails and letters and things like that. Um, so it's, it is a little confusing in the audiobook if you're not aware of that. You're kind of just like, what is, what's going on? But this book basically follows our, a few characters, but primarily the daughter of Bernadette, whose name is B. And she's kind of trying to figure out why her mom went, went missing right before a family trip to Antarctica that she was promised for if she got uh, straight A's basically in school. Um, and we just follow her trying to figure out where her mom went. We also follow um, the perspectives of other side characters and it's just a great time. It's so funny. I think that the author did such a good job in this book with like um commenting commentating commenting basically making fun of a certain type of person um she just mocks like these really funny stubborn people who today i guess we would label as karens it's just a great time it's really funny and um i'm having a great time listening to the audiobook <laughs> Okay, another book that I'm reading is also for that same video that I am filming with Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney and that book is When You Are Engulfed in Flames by David Sedaris. I've never read a David Sedaris book before or like I guess essays um, and this one so far is just really funny and very... <sighs> vulgar isn't really the word that I'm going for here but it'll work. I guess. It's not the word I want to use to describe David Sedaris's writing though. Um, it's, a, it's just... Because it's not really vulgar, but it is kind of gross, so I'll just stick with that because I can't think of the word that I'm thinking of right now. But it's a good time. I think this book is just a collection of, of essays by him. I don't think it's like an actual um, book with like one main plot or anything. Um, and so far I'm having a great time. I can... I can understand why David Sedaris is like such a best-selling author and such, um, yeah, such a highly uh, praised writer because he's really funny and he takes things that are just so ordinary and he makes them hilarious in a gross way, but it's not like a poop joke kind of gross way, if you know what I mean. 
Okay, I believe this is the last book that I'm currently reading. <laughs> I, I can't believe I did this to myself. But that's If This Gets Out by Sophie Gonzalez and Kale, maybe Kale, Dietrich. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is an arc that I have from NetGalley. And this is a YA contemporary, I guess, a YA fiction novel about a boy band and how there's like a forbidden romance within that boy band. A boy band in the US um, specifically. And I like, I never thought I would be into this kind of thing, but I was into One Direction when I was a little older. I was like 17 or something. No, I was like, yeah, 17 <laughs> or 16 when I got into One Direction. Um, and it, I wasn't like a heavy, heavy One Direction stan. Now as an adult, I'm not that into boy bands. I don't even know if there are like any big boy bands out there besides BTS. I don't really count them as like a boy band, like One Direction and stuff. But um, anyway, this book is just that. Oh, it's about a boy band with a forbidden romance within the boy band. And it's a very fast read. I'm like getting through it pretty quickly. Um, I'm surprised. I thought it was going to like take super long with this book. Like I have with all the other currently reading um, books that I have. But yeah, this one, it's really sweet. It seems like i don't know it feels very realistic it doesn't feel too cheesy or or weird or like too um childish for me i really am enjoying it a lot that is it for my currently reading <laughs> it's kind of a mess i'm hoping to clear some of these out fairly soon because after a certain point when I have too many currently reading at once, I will end up putting a lot of them on hold and I hate doing that because it just kind of ruins the whole reading experience for me because then it just feels like a chore in a way because I'm like, ugh, I have to read all of these because I'm just taking too long. But yeah, that's my currently reading. <laughs> Let me see if I can get into my spring recommendations and the books that I want to read basically before spring is over, before my camera dies. Let's see. So the first book that I would absolutely love to read before spring is over here is Anne of Green Gables by Ella Montgomery. I found these beautiful editions on Etsy that I desperately want to purchase but they're kind of expensive given that I have to like buy the whole series so I'm waiting to think about what I'm gonna do about that but yeah I listened to the audiobook of Anne of Green Gables two years ago maybe almost and it was the audible version that is narrated by Rachel McAdams so it was a grand old time and I loved it but Anne of Green Gables is a book that I just have to physically read because there are so, so many beautiful quotes and just beautiful scenes and things that happen that I absolutely have to annotate and just write down in like a quotes journal or something. Um, and I mean, Anne of Green Gables is like the epitome of spring. Like if spring was a book, it would be Anne of Green Gables. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. I love it and I desperately want to reread it. My camera inevitably died, so I'm back. <laughs> the next book I'm going to talk about is Prairie Lotus by Linda? Yes, Linda Sue Park. Um, this is a middle grade novel and it has essentially been pitched as a um, Little House in the Prairie style book but with a half Chinese uh, main character and it apparently, according to a few reviews that I've seen on Goodreads, it talks a lot about racism against the Asian community because this book is actually set in 1880 and there was definitely like an overwhelming amount of racism against anybody basically who wasn't white in America at the time. So I feel like this book might bring a lot to the table for readers that have always loved the Little House on the Prairie series but could never really see themselves represented or something like that. Um, the author has been quoted to have said that she really loved the Little House on the Prairie series when she was younger but she undoubtedly, you know, saw the problems and the racist um the racism in that in that series and um so she decided to write this book and i feel like that's just 
amazing that she was able to do that because she's a writer like that's just I feel like this is what books are are for almost like this is what authors are for like you can just you can just uh write it you can write it I feel like I don't know I feel like I'm really gonna love this book and I hope to get my hands on it sometime before spring is over the next book I have here is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong, I believe. And my beautiful friend Megna that I've already spoken about actually sent this to me in the mail from my Amazon wishlist. I love her so much. Please go follow her bookstagram. Her bookstagram is so, so beautiful. Um, and she's such a lovely human being. So yeah, go check her out. But thank you, Meg, for sending me this amazing book. I don't really know what it's about but i know to expect a lot of heartbreak and a lot of hard-hitting moments and um for some reason in the spring i absolutely love to read books that are like that that will just like destroy me i love reading those kinds of books all the time but for some reason in the spring it just feels very appropriate to read um literary fiction that is just gonna punch you right in the chest and i feel like on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous is gonna do just that. <laughs> the next book I have here is like in the same realm of heartbreak and <laughs> literary fiction that will just destroy you. And that is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abi Dare, I believe is how you pronounce the author's name. And this book I have had for quite a while after winning a giveaway from Chanel's, from Chanel time, um, from her Instagram and I have just been putting it off for way, way too long but this book has... I've just always wanted to read it and I was so happy to have received it um, it basically follows our main character who wants to have her own education she fights for her education in order to know how to stand up for herself and speak up against a lot of injustices I guess that she experiences in her small village and I don't know it sounds really really great a few people have read this already and have rated it extremely high and i feel like i'm just gonna really really enjoy this book um so yeah that's the girl with the louding voice i unfortunately have this packed up because like i've mentioned a few times already i'm moving tomorrow so hopefully i will <laughs> be able to find it easily enough so that I can start reading it before spring is over. The next book I have here is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This is, I mean, I guess I'm kind of reading it for that same video, but I, I love her. I love Carmen Maria Machado so much. I read two of her books. I read um, the short story collection of her body and other parts i think her body and other parties i think is what it's called something like that and then the graphic novel in the low low woods i believe is the title i always forget book titles but i read those two i loved it i've read several interviews by her with her and i just love her as a person i think she's so cool i think she's so smart so intelligent and just a great writer because I enjoyed those two things so much that I can't believe it's taking me so long to read her memoir. This is a book that was like all over booktube I think in 2019 and so many people have read this already and I feel like such a poser for not having read this but it's basically her memoir um, and it's I think I don't know I don't know what to expect I've heard different things about it but I know I'm gonna love it and I know again this is a springtime book for me because it's just gonna be very hard hitting and, and kind of um, hard to read but it's gonna be a great time because it's Carmen Maria Machado and I love anything that she writes okay those are all of the books that I have to talk about really I should probably just focus on currently reading because I have way too many on that list so that's what I guess I'm gonna end up doing for quite a while just focusing on those books and then adding more of them to my TBR as as I finish them so I hope that you enjoyed this video I know it was kind of long but I have been really enjoying watching these longer calmer like talk videos from people they're just very relaxing and very nice to have on in the background so I hope that you enjoyed this I know it's again kind of long but I feel like 
I really enjoyed making it and I think I'm gonna be making some longer videos in the future. But until then, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you soon in my next video and keep reading. Thank you.